Ah, the rail. If there's ever a place that has flattened the romance of the rails, it's London. Think not of the lonesome whistle in the night that speaks of a longing to leave, the rails curving around a bend far away and beckoning. Think instead of crossing arms coming down, bells ringing, lights flashing, cars stopping, backed up traffic jams, the exasperated voices on cell phone calls that crisscross the city during rush hour saying they're going to be late because of the train. More than 50 times a day a train snakes through London on two major lines. Take a look at the Google satellite snapshot of London and you'll see traffic lined up for two trains, our image to the world. Only twice in the past 43 years have we managed to build a bridge over a railway crossing, the last one at Hale and Trafalgar costing $16.3 million. Only 53 more crossings to go. We used to want the rail. We celebrated when it arrived in the 1800s. Even now we envy Kitchener for getting GO train service to Toronto. But the rails inside the city? Only small towns have downtown railway crossings. Every day Londoners moan, someone please do something about the trains. There is nothing we can do, but make it a part of who we are. What separates us in traffic can also bind us. What exasperates the city can also give it flavor. A common enemy creates a common identity. The mosquitoes in Winnipeg, the traffic in Toronto, the rain in Vancouver, in London, the damn rail. <laughs>